All right, so then we got Omar Jabang. Omar Jabang, we are African and we will always be an African. You could be African-American or African-European, but still African. People need to stop self-hatred. Let's be one as black brothers and sisters. Try to read books and make research, then walk in blindly. And then someone commented mm -hmm. on Omar Jabang. Kez, Kez says, ethnically, but culturally, we're drastically different. We just need to learn to respect our differences. Yes. And I just kind of touched on the yeah. ethnic and the culture. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Omar Jabang commented back to Kez and said, yeah, culturally different, but still the same people. Even in Africa, we have different cultures. Yeah. I mean, I I, I, I feel both of them. I can see where they're, they're coming, but I am more with Kez. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, but culturally, we're dra drastically, drastically different. different. Mm -hmm. We just need to learn to respect our differences. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are different. We are definitely, we can't just not, we can't, we cannot shy away from that. We are different. We need to acknowledge that we are, you know, in certain areas. And we also need to just respect those differences. So, um, I do understand what Omar was saying. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. he said, try to, <laughs> try to read books and make and make research um, instead of walking blind. Then walking blind. I, I I agree. I mean, even me, I don't know every. I don't know every country in Africa. Okay, like honestly, coming to the United States helped me um, understand. Help me learn about different parts of different Africa. parts of Africa. I I would have never, you know, known for a fact that we had fifty four countries. Honestly, uh, maybe, but. Um, yeah, so I don't know a lot about Africa, and sometimes I a lot about African countries, and sometimes some of my African friends, we I just look at you know I'm like damn that this is the culture is very different you know and so and the language is different even if we grew up in the same country but just different you know tribes, mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed that some tribes don't even get along with each other. Um, I remember one time there was a guy that was interested in like getting to know me, but then he had an issue because my dad was from a different, my dad was from this tribe that happened to be like a Sudanese tribe and he was also Sudanese and he had issue with that tribe, you know? And so I, I never knew that, you know, I never knew that, but yes, I should do my research and, and, um. Like you said, do your research instead of walking blindly, but you you will never know everything. Um, you always, I mean, that was a surprise to me. So that's a good point. I mean, and it's it's similar here in America as well. Like, um, there's people that's out here in these streets, y'all. So you can't have a, you know, someone that is um, from a certain territory or turf or neighborhood. <laughs> if you in the streets like that, and you're trying to like. Would you gonna try to go get married or have kids with the with the ops? And uh, <laughs> you know, so like I mean, but like also you have like well to do, um, highfalutin, uh, boule, snobby, rich black folk that you know they would probably disown a family member if they was talking to someone that's in the poor working class, yeah, inner city hood, you know. So like there's it's differences all over the world it's not this is not just a black thing it's not just an african african-american thing yeah it's a, it's a people thing it's yeah, a cultural thing exactly. all over the, over this planet d allen says uh yes there are really big differences it's not a bad thing anybody that is not from your country is very different africans are different from each other on the continent same thing with caribbean people Afro-Americans are even very different from black Canadians and the black British. And we grew up in white dominated countries. I spoke on this earlier. African-Americans used to behave more like Africans for centuries. However, due to some, due to, due to some very bad American experiences, that has changed. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, again, thanks, D. Allen. For uh for that comment, and we pretty much just we, touched we'll pretty on, much on, touch on all. Yeah, we got Lady Beto. So Lady Beto, I think this is our last one. Lady Beto, the aggressiveness is different 
and being defined differently by each group. Africans in general are more verbally aggressive in tone compared to most African-Americans about the mundane. There is a lot of emphasis and we are speaking about when speaking with those outside of the group. African-Americans seem to be more aggressive physically with body positioning. Africans tones, Africans tone is more monotonous, meaning if they are speaking, there isn't usually a change in their tone throughout a conversation. African-Americans tend to start out at a lower pace in the general conversation and then escalate to more aggression for select words. <laughs> Those are some of the differences I've noticed, especially as a teacher observing conversations. Yes, I I think there's some truth to that. I honestly, that's, I mean, from my my perspective, I also observed a lot of that, that um, like there's some African-Americans who have, <laughs> who I honestly would never thought that they were upset at that moment. Like they were very low key. They were just like, man, you better leave me alone. You better leave me alone two or three times. And then the ne next thing you know, it's like, they, you know, you're, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, what happened to him? He, Man, he asleep. He, he told him, um, leave him alone. He, he taking he a nap. Yeah. Um, and then with some of my, you know, like African friends that I've seen, like even me personally, um, I get loud in the very beginning. I mean, I'm on your face, like screaming my lungs out. I mean, sometimes I be screaming so loud I can even taste blood in my mouth. Like, so... When, when she said that, I was like, okay, wow, like, it, yeah. I, and I think, yeah, now nowadays I see that a lot of us are verbally, we are verbally abusive than physically. And the reason why is because most of us who come here as refugees, we are told that when we get into a fight, when we get into trouble and we are in the system, we are in, um, uh, you know, law, law enforcement get involved, there's a higher chance for us to get deported, okay? So we cannot afford to get physical with you at any time. We would love to. <laughs> we would love to, but we can't afford to. Papers ain't straight or yeah. it's, too, yes. it's too much of a gamble. Yes, and risk. even when you have your citizenship, don't think that, okay, because you're a citizen now that you're 100%. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them to deport you, but there's a chance that you will get deported. So just be very careful. But especially some of us who come here, we have to be, you know, we have to stay out of trouble and we have to be in the United States for five years before we can apply uh, for citizenship. So in those five years, obviously, we, you know, most of us would have to learn how to just use our mouth and um, then our hands. So that's that's where you, some, you will see a lot. I mean, one of the reasons why we, we don't try to use our hands, it's just our mouth. And then when we notice that you're getting physical, we're like, all right. Some of us are going to lean back and we won't go home. Or some of us are going to be like, all right, you know, let's get into it now. But... <laughs> Nowadays, I just try to prevent myself from just, like, anything like that, you know? Just anything that's going to cause an argument. I was going to say, it, does a lot of that energy come your way? Um, no, not anymore. When I was in high school, I got into a few fights. I, I got into this one one big fight that almost got me locked up. Um, but uh, there was a black officer in our school who actually really helped me. But mm. the principal was dedicated, like, the principal was not playing. He was like, you're 18 now, because I was a senior. He was like, you're 18 now, and um, you can go to jail. You got in a lot of fights in high school? Uh, I would say three fights. No, two fights. Mm. And then, yeah, three fights, and then just, like, arguments, like, here and there. Um, and it, it was always just, were you mostly on a defensive like people starting it. Or yeah, we, yeah, yeah. People, did you oh, ever start anything? I never start anything. Like if yeah. you honestly, all my friends would talk, like I like to play, I like to laugh, I'm always a happy child, you know, but I'm very short temper. I'm very short temper and I know how to control it. Like I know yeah. how to control it. But the minute you come for my family, like this is how I am. Like you can cuss me all day, okay? You can call me we any are, name in the We are book. almost twins. Like yeah. every yeah. I've been in a lot of fights throughout mm -hmm. my life from elementary, middle school, high school, mm. even in college. And it was all because of defending my family. But yeah, and then my people. Because I had yeah. one who said all Africans were the B word. And I was like, wait, what? My mom is African. All my families is African. 
So you calling, you know, I had to like, I, li- I, 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 I was dramatic about it. So I was like, since you said all, you, you cussing all Africans, you cussing my family, I right, cool. You know, and so I went off. And it's like, you, if you really say anything funny about my mom or like my family, you look at them funny, like I get very defensive. But for me personally, you can even, sometimes you can even hit me the first time. I won't even do anything, you know, but like, yeah. So I got into a lot of arguments and fights because of family and um, my people. Yeah. And so like that, and that kind of ties into earlier about the, my family is diverse or whatever. So like, if I hear someone talking reckless about, you know, anybody that like, I mean, and like, I just try to like stay away from negative energy off the rip anyway. Yeah. But like, if it's in my circumference in my area, you know, I think that a bigger crime than um, doing the crime is like sitting on the sideline and letting it happen. And not at least saying something, if you're yeah. not going to like address it, then it's like you're accepting and tolerating it. And then yeah. that person going to continue to get away with it and, and, and probably just graduate to making it worse and worse for the next person. So, yeah, but I've been clean, man. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been. I've, I've not been. Nobody's been rough and beating nobody up. Nobody's been knocking at my doors with no drama. So it's all good. Um, I remember last, uh, last year hmm. I was, I was at a store and this man came at me. He came at me funny. He came at me from the West. Like, he came at me with some bad energy. And I was like, dude, listen. It's a bad day. Okay? So, I was trying to, like, argue with him. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to a different aisle. I'm going to let him do what he needs to do. And then... Did you know him? No, I didn't know him. So, I was, you know, buying... I was looking for lotion. Mm. And so... I was holding this lotion and it was already open. It wasn't, I didn't open it. I, I didn't open it. Is this just a customer or he yeah, No, there? he is a customer. And he thought, he automatically assumed that I opened that lotion. But and I, what's it to him? Exactly. Even if you did, do he work he, here? No, he does not. Sorry, he was shopping as well. Yes. So I was like, you know what? I'm not, and then he said something. He's like, don't you open it? You're not buying it. You know, and my brother was there. My brother hates drama. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to argue with him. As soon as, I, as soon as I started talking back, my brother left. Because he was like, I don't, mm-hmm. like, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want no drama. Yeah. And so I had to leave as well because I realized that he was also going to do he was also going to entertain um like if i we were going to go back and forth back and forth mm-hmm. so i was like you know what i'm going to go to a different was it the african american dude no he was um a white man oh okay he was a little uh, older too so yeah. i respected the fact that he was older i was like okay i'm not going to get into an argument with him and what's the point like i don't have to prove to him that i didn't open it so mm. my thing is i went to a different aisle if he was to follow me to a different aisle and like you know and like try to argue then it was going to be a different thing because at this point i'm removing myself from the situation and if you follow me because that had happened before where i'm trying to run away and somebody's like okay well i'm gonna follow her so then at this point, I'm like, you're looking for something? I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. So, he but. Was, he was flat out wrong. Yeah. He was, what we, <laughs> and an old school saying was, uh, he was dipping in the Kool-Aid and didn't, <laughs> and don't know the flavor. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he definitely was. He dipped and, um. Because he was wrong. He thought, yeah. assumed that you yeah, opened he it. Yeah, literally assumed. And then it, it looked like maybe I was open, but I was trying to close it, uh-huh. you know? But when, when I was holding it, you can tell that it was open. You go to the store. How many times mm-hmm. you go to the store, you see things are open, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. And I honestly be one of those people that try to fix it. Like, for example, and then sometimes people are, get annoyed when they shop with me because I be trying to correct every single thing. Like, mm-hmm. there's no employees in there. So, if I see, like, an underwear on, like, the makeup section. You're I, like, this don't belong here. I, it don't belong Let here. Let me I find like, you your home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or if, if even if I don't put exactly on that spot, I'll take it to the closing section and just put it somewhere. In that area. In, in that area. So, I'm like, the fact that you actually thought I opened this and you even yelled at me. You know, like, you could have came at me, like, nicely or... But dude came at me like aggressive, and I was like, "I." Right. Okay. Yeah, he lucky he didn't come across the the old you. you oh, been like, oh yeah, the old hey, you sir, would not you care. Help me, uh, fi-. He would have got close. You would squirt in his face. Nah, nah, that's yeah. what you did. Nah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that old me wouldn't care. The old me, like, I didn't really, I didn't like. I knew I wanted something out of my life, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And I wasn't. I was so upset at the United States. I was angry at everybody here. I hated people. Here because are you low key still kind of upset with the US? 
Um, the U.S., yeah, but not as angry as I was when I came because when we were, you know, when we were coming to the United States, people were telling us that we're going to be rich and we're going to be living in, like, a mansion and all these different things. Nothing about racism, nothing about all these different things. So as soon as I started, um, as soon as it was pointed out to me that I was so different and my, my, that those differences were so ugly and, like, bad, Mm -hmm. I was very upset. And I, I hated the fact that people make me hate myself. Until this day, I struggle with certain part of myself and my body that I don't really appreciate because, you know, in the United States, people focus more on the appearance and, like, how you look um, from the outside. And and I hate that. And I hate the fact that they influence me to, to really, really look at myself and say, God damn, I hate this part of me. I hate this. I hate that. And so when I, as soon as I start to hear that voice in my head, like, Ooh, you know, I hate my skin or something like that. Not my skin color, but like my skin because it's probably dry mm-hmm. or um, like I, I struggle with eczema, uh, eczema, you know, and other things. So um, I just I just tell myself, no, 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 no. Like you're beautiful, you know, positive affirmations and stuff like that. But I hated that part of the United States and then social media because back home we was poor. We didn't have no Internet. You know, mm-hmm. you you were you didn't know what people were doing on social media. Um, you just kind of live life, you know, day by day and like people were happy regardless of whether you, you had food today or not. Um, so I, I really hated that part of the, and I still do. I still really do. But I'm like, now I'm taking, um, power and control over my emotions instead of letting other people, other people like really affect me or like what I see on social media really affect me. We're human. We're going to get hurt either way like i'll go on social media and i see like a black a dark skin is being like you know um like on on tiktok a dark skin is being bashed for being dark skin like she had freaking control over her skin color and then i'm like dang like you insulting her you insulting me type of thing you know so um and then the hijabi i I read on tiktok uh last night actually uh um this hijabi was she was replying to a comment the comment was you need to take that towel off your head you know, and it's, it's just things that you see like that, that it's like, why, you know, but unfortunately, things that we have to deal with, you know. I mean, like, um, I, I think about uh, not just African, African-American, but like um, just other cultures um, and communities of color and things like that. Um, you know, like there's a, there's a Mexican, Mexican saying that uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> a Mexican... Uh, greatest enemy is another Mexican. Uh, things like that. Um, and it's the same with us black people too, yeah. you know? And like, even with us personally, like sometimes our biggest like enemy is ourselves. ourselves. Um, so. But like, you know, like the whole, you know, it's interesting uh, internet world. We even have to have videos like this difference between African and African American. Yeah. There, are there videos maybe i haven't seen but are there videos that you've come across where it says the difference between uh american whites and europeans or like they like yeah is no there? no i, I mean, mean like maybe but i've never seen i've never seen uh, anything like that like i always see ones about like muslims and like africans african americans even african americans with themselves you know mm-hmm. it's it's freaking crazy that the 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 time that we have to take to really explain to people and educate people on these topics, to me, like, I'd rather talk about Barbies and freaking anything else but this, but we're being put in that position that we have to really... You know what it is now that I'm just, I, you know, I'm, like, using this analogy just now is um, when you got a kid that's being bad and you outsmart the kid by, like, giving them a task or giving them something that's going to keep them busy even if it tires them out or bo- basically it takes their attention off of the thing that they're being disruptive mm-hmm. or they're, you know, you want to get them out of your business of, you know, you got to take care of some important stuff. So I think that all of this, uh, you guys are different or the, cause they even, they have programs where they have sponsors of, uh, immigrants and people that come over to America where they, they have a whole program where like they basically tell Africans to stay away from African Americans, you know. Um, yeah. So then they already pitting us against each other, and then when we focus so much on that energy of divisive uh, divisiveness, um, we're we're 
we're like the child that's like, oh, I'm doing this task for mommy and daddy when they off, they off focusing on how to get money yeah. <laughs> and how yeah. to build wealth for, for this, you know, for their families and all that stuff. So we busy bickering and picking apart cult. Yeah. Everybody, every, if you from a, like one of the comment commenters said, like you from a different country, you automatically going to have a different culture. Exactly. And even within that country, um, there's going to be different cultures because there's different tribes and like yeah. it's in America, it's tribal, you know, like if, like even you think about like sports or think about anything like if someone is from i'm from michigan and if i come across from someone that's new york and then we talk about sports it, it becomes almost a rival like they like oh well my my new york knicks is better than your detroit pistons you're like it's just very <laughs> you know it's very you know combative and competitive but uh yeah but yeah please subscribe tune into the channel nadifa says i'm zach van harris jr make sure you comment like share Hit that notification bell so you can get all the new videos and content that Nadifa is going to be dropping this year. Yeah. And uh, we love y'all. Thank you for the support. And until next time, peace, love, smile, truth, galaxy. I'm Zach. I see you. Health is well. So make sure you take care of yourself and be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Be kind to nature. The universe will support you. Always.